Welcome traders. It is Sunday the 17th of April. It's a long weekend in the UK and I'm just uh, prepping for the week that commences Monday the 18th of April and Monday is also going to be a public holiday in the UK. Um, so looking at the fundamental concerns, just updating the inflation, US inflation for March now at 8.5, pretty much in line with the trend. Uh, and that that just means that it's not accelerating, it's not becoming uh, parabolic, which is a good thing. Uh, it's still tied very much to COVID as well as Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So once those are over, we'll really only know then what the, uh, what you know, what the, what the, how much of an impact that really is on it. So we need to uh, keep an eye on that. Um, Russia obviously is still, there's no, like, just difficult for me to send out uh, a winning case here for, for uh, the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, I'm also beginning to think it's less likely there's going to be nuclear uh, as an option because I think that the whole point of uh, Putin invading it is that he wants the wealth that's there. Um, and so I don't, I'm not really sure what the story is there. So we'll have to see how that unfolds, but it's going to be exciting. Um, but I'm just obviously uh, defensive and protective of the Ukrainians who obviously didn't ask for all of this uh, pain and suffering. Um, the US democracy obviously is still very much under threat. We've got the midterm elections in the in November. Um, and uh, again, there's a massive rise of white nationalism and fascism in the US, believe it or not. It's huge. Uh, it's really, really big. And uh, so this is a real danger to democracy. So it means that, uh, um, and the, and there is globally a danger, a threat to democracy. Globally, it's actually taking a bit of a hit. Um, there's a rise in autocracies. Uh, and so there's just, a, it's a very real danger of our time, I guess. Unfortunately, it seems that World War II did not see the back of that. It, uh, it's still a real danger. So that is just uh, obviously quite scary as it happens. Now, one more thing this week. Uh, looking at major news coming out, we've got uh, Powell speaking on uh, Thursday in the evening. It's really all eyes on what are the tools that um, the Fed are going to use to help combat uh, inflationary risks. Okay, so they can really only deal with what they can deal with in terms of what's within their control, but it's all very interesting to see what's going to be happening with that. And the really, really big news is next weekend are going to be is going to be the French presidential election. Um, you know, Macron is leading, but it is very much head to head. And Le Pen, my concern again is she is, uh, there's some nationalist and right extremism ties there. And again, I think that it's highly likely that she would disrupt uh, France would become uh, effectively essentially an issue within the EU. And so there would be more harm, I think, um, based on my limited education on this, more harm than good would come out of this um, um, pretty much for everybody. Uh, so there is a concern I, I, in this particular situation and nobody's perfect. I would certainly, I think, I'm hoping, of course, that she isn't, uh, that that we don't really have, again, she's pro-Putin. Um, she's uh, also pro autocracy and again anti-democratic and this is for me as a major danger and again there's a global rise in it so this is unfortunately just going to be the, these are going to be the problems of our times and they are very real and they, we need to be paying attention to this so here's the thing i would absolutely not be have any open i beg your pardon would not have any open euro positions this coming week i'm going to be out of that in the run-up to it it is likely to be incredibly volatile with major gaps especially uh if she wins the election um there's going to be major gaps i think in terms of that massive of risk um so uh spreads will be high it's just going to be chaos so well that that's that's going to be my traders approach on it and therefore uh, that is going to be something i'll be staying away from all right uh let's go ahead and have a look at the charts and see where we stand on everything Okay, cool. So looking at the volatility index, the VIX, we pull back into this level of support around here. We've produced a bit of a swing low. So the most likely scenario here is potentially to see the start to climb back up as we see an increase in volatility. Four are also looking a little bit more bullish than bearish. That's the most likely scenario there. Dollar index. All right. So dollar index is just tapping that 100 level. We've got a bullish engulfing candle over here as well. We're back up. We've got a really, so far, very um bullish uh, candle as well, which indicates unless it closes lower. And this could be something that happens after the election process. Uh, it could be that we see a bit of a rejection that could happen next week. So we could actually see a big reversal um, in the coming 10 days. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, yep. So having a look at that, but expecting this overall trend to continue to hit high, but this is now entering an area where historically it has reversed. So we've got to keep both in mind. It does look really bullish. It could be looking to move higher, but at the same time, this level, these levels can hold and conditions can change.
Looking at the euro dollar, it does very much look like it is keen, uh, keen on heading lower, down below 1.08, then onwards towards 1.0600. So I'll be looking this week for breaks below that. And again, this whole area, not really sure how much volatility is going to be added to the markets in the coming 10 days. And I certainly expect as the election results uh, come out that that's going to be uh, quite uh, quite crazy. So uh, would exercise extreme caution um, across those pairs. Uh, anything that touches a euro uh, could also be impacted by that. So here you can see a nice little bullish bullish divergence, bullish engulfing candle. So the expectation here certainly is that cable, if we break above these highs, it's going to be heading higher. Um, and we, if we continue, if we break below these lows, then I'd expect it to continue lower. So this is uh, attempting to turn around. The question is, can it succeed in doing that? Aussie dollar, US dollar, very strong weekly rejection the previous week. Now looking as though it wants to hit a little bit lower. That monthly candle forming a bit of a bearish rejection at that level as well. And again, all of this, if it follows through, I'm going to expect to see Aussie dollar to be hitting quite a bit lower there. So then Kiwi dollar, US dollar, very much the same. Uh, and this leads me, I mean, very quickly to Kiwi CAD, which was on my uh, watch list last week. You can just see a very nice bearish consolidation, a solid breakout, bearish candle as well, follow through on that. So a lot of the momentum, at least on Kiwi CAD and potentially from Kiwi P is being nice and bearish. Okay, so uh, expecting that to continue down at this point in time as it approaches levels, I'll be looking for breaks and retests, but looking for trend continuation setups. Then looking at dollar yen, so dollar yen itself has had some really, really big moves. This is unusual, by the way, historically, um, it's it's unusual for it to do it. It's starting to breach uh, highs that we ha really haven't had in a very, very, very long time. Uh, and so I'm not really entirely sure how the BOJ, Bank of Japan, feels about this. Um, but they, at some point, I would expect a correction. But this trend looks very healthy. Um, overall, this looks really healthy. It really is about this level. Is, uh, is Are we going to get some sales coming in here? Is it gonna, something going to happen with the dollar that it's going to impact it? So I'm exercising extreme caution. But I would say that this looks very nice and very nice and bullish. It is definitely overextended and due for a normal healthy correction within the uptrend. Um, but yep. Yeah, there's a lot going on there, so exercising some caution there. Now, dollar Swiss, you can see also that dollar helping break it out of this junk range. It's starting to pick up a little bit more speed there. And you can see it's coming back into the top <laughs> junk range as well here. Um, so overall, expecting that to continue to push higher, but it's doing it of its own accord. It's, it doesn't, this, what I mean by that is it seems it's a dollar that's driving that as opposed to it uh, of its uh, kind of in terms of Swiss banks, uh, SMB policies. So here, also not a lot of clarity being offered with dollar CAD, so I'd stay away from that. It looks pretty much sideways. Moving on to the pairs of interest. So this is where I'd like to see this break a little bit higher. So there could be, so here's a hypothetical. It really depends on how um, how ultimately everyone views uh, whoever is ultimately, you know, the, the result of the elections could be seen as positive for the euro and therefore uh, that could see a big move higher, could do that. There, there is a case to be made here for a nice reversal for all those to go to the upside, it is overextended to the downside, and a big move up to 1525 could uh, offer some good money making opportunities. Um, so, there is a case for that. It looks much more obvious on the pound Aussie because the pound is much stronger. You've got a really nice little bit of an inverted head and shoulder pushing a little bit higher. So, I'm looking for pullbacks and continuations to the upside. You can see it's very overextended on the weekly. A weekly, and I'm looking that swing low looks like it's got some room to move to move up a little bit higher there. Um, and also, that monthly forming a nice bullish candle. So, for me, this is very much on my list looking for moves to go a little bit higher. Let's go back and have a look at pound yen. So pound yen also continuing to the upside. You can see that initial rejection and then just continuing to, to move on higher the weekly as well. Overall looking nice and bullish. Uh, the trend over here looks really nice. It's broken through this major level. Um, so it does seem in many ways that, that this has got some good room to continue higher unless something else happens that uh, is not really uh, um, uh, um, highlighted on the calendar. What is wrong with me? Sorry, guys. Um, okay, pound cat is also showing the potential to creep up a little bit higher, also producing that swing low, and there could be some good moves to the upside for day traders this coming week as well. Not so much for swing traders, potentially, more so for day traders. Pound Aussie, as I said, just spoken on that. Pound QB, definitely. Very nice, strong bullish engulfing candle pushing a little bit higher. Um, it's done a lot of the move as well, but they, there's, there's the easy, easy, wow, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, easily potential for 1.97, I think, for it to do that, even possibly even higher down to 2.0 and a little bit higher there as well. So, liking the look of those Aussie Swissy. This was the idea of an inverted head and shoulders. So if it does weaken, we've got a bit of a bearish candle here. There could be some moves down, breaking below the low. They would, I would then expect a bigger move down towards these levels. And there's some signs of rejection happening over there. So we'll see. It has to break below those lows for me to be uh, interested in that. Now, 
Aussie yen. So keeping in mind that the yen crosses are looking very, very bullish, and there's no real reason why they would necessarily head lower though. What I am looking for here is a potential that if something does happen and there's a strong rejection, uh, they're very nicely overextended. And therefore for day trading opportunities, I'd be looking for a really strong correction, which is a long way down. And therefore there could be some really profitable opportunities if it does correct to the downside. I'm just saying that certainly the yen crosses look, those trends look amazingly strong. Uh, they don't look actually like they're going to be coming back anytime soon. Um, so, but it happens. Sometimes they get to a key level and there's a strong reversal or Bank of Japan says something and something happens. Um, but the trend technically looks really strong. But I'm looking for breaks of the low here and looking for good shorting opportunity back to that downside there. And KiwiCat, I've already spoken, continuation to the downside there. Okay, moving away from currencies, having a look at global commodities. Overall, they're looking really nice and bullish. We've pulled back into the moving averages. Nice little bullish candle here. Um, at this point in time, I'm expecting this to continue to push a little bit higher, at least back into these old highs here and then see how that um, handles it. You can see even though there was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction uh, on the initial um, invasion of Ukraine and it's come down a bit, it does look as though the trend was very much in place and it's just uh, continuing to push back up uh, uh, to those levels. Let's have a look at gold, for example. Gold, nice break uh, above the highs here. So we're now, uh, you know, we haven't been here since March. Um, we've got room to hit at least back up to 2000. So for me, I think that's really going to be my initial target and then we'll deal with it, but it is somewhat free to continue to head up to the old highs. But let's see how, I'm going to see how it reacts at 2000. Would it be the same for silver? Um, silver, again, also looking bullish. It's just not as clean a chart as gold, and therefore I favor gold for the trading opportunities, but the direction is principally the same. Copper is just struggling. Yeah, it's very, very messy, but it is more bullish than bearish, but it's just struggling with that range. Excuse me, natural gas. Amazingly overextended in terms of that. I mean, look, we've been up this high in the past. In fact, um, the last time we were at the highs where we are now was only a few years ago. Um, and so the potential for it to head a little bit higher, it's broken through this level. Next levels start to look around 8.2, even a little bit higher up towards 10. Um, but there will be pullbacks. It's overextended on the daily, it is overextended on the weekly, and it's overextended on the monthly. So I do anticipate at some point there will be some pullbacks that will be shown with very strong bearish rejection candles that will show up on the daily and all weekly. And I'll be looking for those to be happening soon. But in the meantime, I'll be looking for, um, so divergence will start to show up in the four hour, if not the daily, but I'll be looking for buyers to the upside. All right, moving on to crude oils, really nice support found over here. Um, nice, strong bullish engulfing candle from last week. All of this indicating continuation to the upside. So I'll be looking for it to come back up to these old levels, see how we react against those, but still looking for buyers this week. Brent crude as well, uh, looking for that. I think I can just remove this trade idea. Um, and we've yeah, produced a high low. We're looking nice and bullish. This is looking really good, I think, for buyers to the upside there. Sugar. So moving away, let's look at some of the other commodities pulling back into these old highs here. It's nice and bullish in every other respect. I want to see how it handles this level, but so far, all of this indicates it's looking to continue to the upside. So I'll be looking for a nice bullish candle uh, this week and looking for buy opportunities back up to the upside. We'll see how we handle the twenty forty nine, twenty dollars forty nine uh, level there, or is it forty one? Um, and coffee as well. Okay, interesting. We've now produced a bit of a lower high here. Um, and we are still looking more bearish. So potentially here, it's going to move a little bit lower before it stabilizes and then resumes an uptrend. But that's fine because it's heavily overextended. Uh, and so that could well be the case. Again, here, you know, wheat, uh, again, you know, this is another uh, commodity coming out of Ukraine. Sunflower oil, wheat, all of these are uh, impacted by this and Russia as well. Um, but yeah, so taking a bit of a hit here, but in an uptrend on the daily, doing a potential swing high here. So there's a bit of a stall happening right now. Uh, but this behavior, these two candles looking very similar to what we've seen on Brent crude, uh, uh, natural gas, uh, a few of the others as well. Uh, so all of this indicating there's a strong likelihood to move higher, but this doesn't look as bullish as the crude oils. So interesting to see how that will ultimately unfold. Cotton. Cotton. All right, there we go. Some bearish diversion, strong bearish. Well, not actually strong, but a semi bearish rejection off these highs uh, could indicate that it's going to take a little bit of a move lower down. It is overextended on the monthly. It could be stalling, but the weekly looks okay to me. So it might do another leg up before it has a bit of a deeper correction there. Okay, moving on to the global indices. Right. So this has been, so if you've been trading and it's been troubling or it's been choppy and messy, uh, it has indeed been, been the case here. I'm expecting we've got a nice bull bullish setup candle here on the monthly for the month of March. I need to see a break of the high to get a confirmation the market is going to continue back up to the old highs. Uh, conversely, or alternatively, I need a break of the lows before I start looking for shorts to the downside. In between that, it is, for want of a better expression, uh, 
I can't think of anything that doesn't involve the word, but that doesn't sound like shit show, but that's kind of what it is. It's a bit of a crapshoot, I guess, is another expression. It's volatile and it's going to be incredibly choppy, which means I should be looking for shorter term opportunities and be very quick to adjust my stop loss and take some profit. Uh, here we go. So the S&P has well produced a swing high off this level. It's battling with that 4525 level, but it still hasn't broken the low and it still hasn't broken the high. And this is the case. Until it breaks the low, I don't really anticipate really... Um, significant moves to the downside and until it breaks the high and if, when it breaks the high then I do expect it to resume that trend to the upside and we are just past halfway through the month so um, who knows we could see some bullishness that comes in in the next uh, 10 days that sees it break and start heading a little bit higher alternatively if we see moves to the downside but exercising immense caution that daily doesn't look strong the weekly has produced a swing high but that monthly is still in uh, still valid that concept is still valid so the nasdaq as well having moved to the lowest but we kind of know this we know that this, there are a lot of tech stocks you know <clears throat> excuse me facebook meta PayPal, Netflix, a lot of them have taken really, really big hits. Um, and so they've shed a lot of weight, 50 plus percent on some of their share prices. So uh, meaning that's why it's not a surprise that we're seeing some of those head a little bit lower. But still, again, it's got to break the lows before I maintain that bearishness. I am just going to highlight here the Russell 2000 breaking below here, coming back in, finding some resistance, producing a bit of an inside bearish candle would in isolation or traditionally that would indicate a break lower. So I've got to keep an eye on this because it could go either way. But I have, you can't just make that prediction yet because there's also evidence. Here we go away from the UK. Look at that beautiful bullish candle. Very sexy uh, bullish candle for uh, March and we've reached the high of it. So the UK is looking relatively strong. Let's see what DAX, the DAX in Germany is looking like. Not a very strong finish on that, but it's a strong rejection of the lows, but not a strong close. And therefore it's not free and clear. I need to see it above 14.8 before I anticipate moves to the upside. And right now it's just hovering where it is, which could be similar, could just continue to move a little bit lower. It has produced a beautiful swing high, you know, the great example of a rejection of support uh, becoming resistance and so it could very well head lower euro stocks as well back up above that level um now kind of testing it testing its strength against these levels over here but that's slightly more bullish so the euro stocks and the FTSE looking stronger than the uh, german index then we've got the Nikkei bullish candle same thing inside uh, sort of indecision candle at this point in time and so we'll have to see how that goes but we did finish with a bullish candle on Friday if we break high we could go back into an uptrend on that weekly and we'll finish off with the Australian ASIX which again is also back up at those highs looking optimistic is is probably a better way to describe it to see if it breaks up above those levels so again um, there are great divides between what the US, what some of the indices are looking like, and they're usually a lot more correlated than that. And I think that there's something probably worthwhile trying to find out why that is. Uh, and I will see if I can do that this coming week. Okay, moving on to the equities of interest. I'm going to try and work through these faster than I normally do because I tend to slow down. So downtrend on Royal Mail, but it does appear to be slowing. So far, we've got this indecision. Uh, and uh, we've also got a bit of an indecision candle here as well, which could lead to a move a little bit higher. It has definitely put the brakes on. Let's see if we break higher um, and start to head up, especially if we break these highs and become more bullish on that uh, versus heading lower. Amex. Amex, uh, overall, strong rejection of the lows, but it's an inside candle at this point in time. It's got a slightly lower high, could be a higher low, and it could lead to a consolidation and a breakup. Let's see how that ultimately goes. It's above this level of resistance, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. Apple, consolidation, that's what's really happening here. It's got a lot of buyers below this level, but it's got no buyers above that level, so it's effectively just treading water where it is. And so for now, I would treat it as a consolidation, and we'll see how long it's going to take before it breaks out. Uh, Arc. Arc? Okay. So um, here again, we have slowed down. There's no doubt that we're starting to see bullish divergence come on. Look at this kind of MACD trending high. It's even creeping in. Ugh. It's even creeping in a little bit here. I don't know why that has to pop up every time I do it. Um, uh, but uh, so it is creeping in. We'll have to see how that ultimately unfolds. Uh, it's putting on the brakes a bit here, but it, 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 yeah, it, it hasn't turned yet. So I need to see a break. I need to see that swing line, a nice bullish candle. But I do feel confident that we are in that area where it is. Uh, it has a very fair chance of turning around. AT&T, strong recovery there. We've got a higher low there, um, back into this level of resistance. So they are doing well. They've actually gapped up here and there was some news in the last week, which I um, missed out on. So there was actually some, uh, I think there was a, a shift in ownership of one of the um, uh, subsidiaries at any rate. Uh, I could look it up now, but it's fine. Actually, let me just do that quickly. 
Okay, so it was due to the spin-off of WBD deducted from Friday's closing price. Apparently that was a factor. So a bit of a boost there on AT&T. Okay, Berkshire Hathaway doing very well. This is a look at this fantastic breakout and a bit of a normal natural correction. It's overextended. Very nice bullish uh, indicator over there, momentum indicator. So it looks really good. So my expectation is back down into the 324 area, looking for to find some support there. May even find support closer to that around that 340 area. It's a little bit overextended on the monthly. But overall, this is a beautiful uh, animal over there, looking great. Um, okay, BP also looking really bullish here. That's going to lead to a push uh, higher. It's this the failure and exhaustion here. It looks like it's pretty much gonna it's gonna push past that and continue higher. So expecting more bullish uh, moves attempts at least up to that resistance level. Exxon Mobil, same thing again, continuing higher. They, I mean they're. Their uh, product isn't going anywhere. If anything, we know exactly where that's going. Coca-Cola is phenomenal. This would appear to be the jewel in Berkshire Hathaway's crown right now. Um, it could be leading, this is a silly thing, but it could be leading simply as we head into the summer in the north, we're just going to see an increase in consumption of Coca-Cola products. And actually, there are far more qualified people than myself uh, to be able to give uh, clear answers on a lot of those. Um, yeah. Okay. So again, we see that we can see it slowing down here. I just put a little question mark there looking general motors to break the high here. So when we break uh, 4530, I then become interested in going long or really nice green bullish candle off this level 3990 of support. JP Morgan Chase falling through this level. Okay, so this is one level where I was anticipating, certainly if I was looking at it from a quarterly perspective, that was a really great place here for it to find some support. So if I get a quarterly candle, which would put us in June, a really nice bullish candle there, uh, it's going to be a great, uh, for me then, it's going to be a really good opportunity. I like the look of that. So I need it to recover from where it is right now. Alternatively, it's fallen through this level. It's going to fall back down to the next one, 106. Going to be interesting to see if next week we have a bounce back for, um, rather than that meta. Okay, so meta has some strong structural issues. Um, again, I'm sure there are way more qualified people out there, lots of them who can comment on, you know, the real value in Meta. All I can really do is say kind of as, as a user from, you know, the early, early, earliest days uh, of Facebook, it's not really, it doesn't get a lot of love from me and people that I know. Um, they're, we're, it's almost like we're tied to it out of, you know, out of, not out of lack of alternatives. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here because I want to see if it can recover from this with if whether the metaverse is actually going to take off. We'll see how it goes. Metaverse feels like just one series of NFTs, one more kind of thing. And I'm not sure if, if people are used to that. So I'm I I think that yes, if there's a boost across the market, they, it'll benefit from that. But I'm not really I can't genuinely predict what the likelihood is that people uh, like it. It's just that nobody I know really likes to use it, but businesses benefit well from it. As I said, we're not really the, the we're, we're the product. We're not really the clients. We're sort of the product, if that makes sense. Um, okay. So again, looking here at Morgan Stanley, it's really attempting a double bottom here. It's trying to turn around. A bullish candle this week would be a good indication. It's a great area for it to turn around that it's managed to shed some weight. Look at that consolidation and then finally giving in a bit. It could hit a little bit lower, but actually I think it's, it's in the perfect area to turn around. So we're going to have to see how that goes. Okay. Netflix again is trying desperately to turn around where it is. It really genuinely is. It's similar to uh, Meta. It's broken. It's broken through that level. It's falling a little bit lower. It again, if I look at it from a quarterly perspective, uh, actually now it looks much more likely that it's potentially going to head a little bit lower. And if that is the case, it's going to drop quite a bit. Um, so that is interesting to see what's going to happen there. But I put down as 300 as its next level of support if it's going to continue lower. NVIDIA, shame. That was a really strong recovery there. We've had a couple of rejections here. Rejection wick there, wick there, wick there, um, or shadow or tail, whichever you prefer. And I want to see if it can boost from it. This is a good buy area. So therefore, it only really becomes a problem once we break below that 176 level and head down here. So I'm, I'm curious to see what happens here. Again, there's a potential for a level of support here. I'm just going to put that level in here. Let's see if we can hold at 200. Let's call it 200. 200 is fair if we can stay above 200 and see if we get a boost on that. Uh, PayPal. Wow, really? Okay, look, not a lot of difference here. This is where we were for March. We're still in this area. Again, a break above this, a swing low, and that would be a good opportunity for me. I'm absolutely very happy to get in on some, get me some PayPal on that. I still use PayPal every day, so um, it's a product I use, but it might have just been simply overvalued. That's possible these things happen. Um, all right, Spider. Okay, so let's have a, a look at these. Yeah, that also looks like it's trying to put on the brakes and break. It's got to break above these levels for it to become more bullish. Spotify. Also has pullback in, a little bit of a bearish uh, uh, 
engulfing candle there, but it also is slowing down. It's in the same thing. So very similar candlestick behavior across uh, some of these charts there, and they've shed a lot of weight. They've in a good place to turn around. The question is, can they actually do that? Tesla. All right. So Tesla is struggling with where it is here. I would just highlight here. We've got three lower highs here. Okay. We've got a, we've got um, the, and and that is an area that's struggling. So notice every time it tries to come up with, it hits a battle. Every time it tries to hit higher, it hits it hits a battle a lot earlier. And so there could be some issues there, uh, and therefore see it coming in and testing these levels over here. But but f uh, yeah. Fundamentally, that's a really nice, or sorry, fundamentally meaning at the core idea of a technical analysis that looks nice and bullish and therefore moves higher are still effects. It's a good area to buy in terms of levels of support here. So sorry, that's not financial advice. What I, what I mean to say is these price levels are relatively strong and therefore this is where I could expect price to turn around at these uh, levels over here. So will it hold? <clears throat> it does look as though it's doing a bit of a swing high. It wants to come down and test these levels. I'd need to see it come up. Once it breaks that, then we're going to have to see how it deals with that. And then, you know, there's talks of uh, stock splits as well. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, Vanguard. Uh, overall, bullish candle. Similar to the indices, it's pretty much going to be the same pattern over and over again. What's going to happen with that, we'll have to see. In other words, the same analysis applies. Okay, so we're now looking at bonds. You can see them heading uh, a lot lower. So again, heavy selling on a lot of those. Uh, interesting to see if we're going to see a bit of a bounce higher on those. It's slowing down. You can see it's just kind of a big move down and then a shorter move down. So uh, in this area, I expect possibly some moves a little bit lower this week, but also starting to put the brakes on on that. It's starting to look a little bit as though divergence is in its near future and it is starting to put the brakes on in terms of price action. Let's look at the euro bubble. So again, I wonder how this will be impacted by the elections. We'll have to see that is starting to put the brakes on. You can see here we had a bullish green candle here move down and suddenly we get a series of bullish candles here starting to flatten out. It's starting. It wants to turn around and hit. <clears throat> excuse me, head a little bit higher, you can see it's starting to come down to this level of support. Um, so it may just do a retracement before continuing lower. Eurobund, uh, similar but heavy selling over here. So it's not actually, there's no bullish divergence yet. Um, it's at a major level. It has come back down. I think there's still room for it to potentially go a little bit lower, but they're going to start to slow down if for no other reason than to just experience a, a, a temporary um, pullback. Uh, all right, let's move on to cryptos. Okay, so cryptos are tied to uh, equities at this point in time. They are not a safe haven option at this point. Not to say they never will be. I'm saying it's an idea that's been floated, uh, but they are not demonstrating it yet. We'll know it when we see that markets are crashing and cryptos are climbing. We'll see it, but it, we're not seeing it just yet. What we are seeing is, again, these higher lows here. It's trying to breach above the 46,000 level. Again, a bullish candle this week. Um, in line with some bigger moves on the crypt on uh, equities, I beg your pardon, we'd see it start to recover. I still like this. I'm still pretty happy with this. We get a pullback, nice green candle. We push higher. We got some green candles here. We need to break above those highs to see follow through. So it's actually the same thing. And this is just patience, patience. And I, I mean, faith, if you want to go that route. But for me, technically, I'm okay with either of these. Um, and uh, let's have a look. Cardano as well. Let's go with that. Yeah, they're all producing the same. They've got these inside monthly candles. When they break above the high, I'm bullish. If they break below the low, I'm bearish. But until then, it is a waiting game. It is a bit of a waiting game. This would be interesting to see if uh, Binance does break a little bit higher, break these highs, could finish a little bit higher for the week and finishing off on Solana. Although that looks a bit bearish, it could end up looking like a nice bullish green candle to break the high. Okay, so it involves this week some patience. I'm uh, definitely planning ahead around the elections next weekend. I'm absolutely do not want to be exposed um, to anything over the weekend because, of course, this I've seen elections in the past and uh, they create insane uh, chaos. And so I'd stay away from that. Um, and that's it. So, ladies and gents, have a fantastic week. Look after yourselves, please. Uh, be careful. And uh, yes, I will see you next uh, weekend in the next video. Thank you very much.